we thank you so much father for saying yes to come on our group of the holy spirit and to give us this talk today i met father just once in aurangabad when he came to give us a retreat here and i had to leave for dubai at that time but the few hours i spent with father i knew father was anointed and he knew what he was talking about and father has touched many lives in aurangabad we thank you father and we welcome you to this talk on zoom inspiring us to do what god wants you to tell us thank you father and god bless yeah can we begin now yes father go ahead yeah let's ask the holy spirit to guide us this evening as we share the word of god with each other father mary intercede for us hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy mary holy mother mary. of the lord stop pray for us pray for us now may be our of our prayer praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord i begin i begin the topic of our discussion this evening is the humility a gift of the holy spirit we begin with the humility of jesus the first the the letter of saint paul to the philippians reminds us that jesus was though he was in the form of god he did not count equality with god but emptied himself in the chapter 2 so jesus emptying himself from the nature of god and taking the form of human beings i believe that was the highest form of humility of jesus jesus is god creator and to give up his godness god nature and come down to human nature that is his creatures from here we can begin what is there in god so we see the, the the humility of jesus that's like that's where i like to introduce our topic with jesus himself so emptying his uh, the greatness the pride the authority of being god because there's no no one above god and that is the greatness he he just empties that and comes down taking the form of a slave to the extreme form so that's first point when we discuss about the humility of jesus the second part about the humility of jesus is um well when he was born he was born in a manger in the midst of the animals and i believe he is the king he is the savior he is the creator of all these i believe he deserved a better place to take birth probably in a palace because he is a king and yet whatever may be the circumstances and whatever the theological explanation that is given why he had to be born in in the midst of the animals whatever he accepted that he should be born in the midst of the animals so again a humility is being accepted by jesus and the third thing is that we find all the time in jesus is that he is obedient to his earthly father and mother earthly father when he was found missing and then they found him back and then the the, uh, the gospel of the luke tells us that he remained obedient to them i'm sure every time jesus looked at mary and joseph he knew that they are worldly though he respected them he loved them but what i'm saying jesus was with all his wisdom and knowledge that he had and of course the power of the holy spirit yet coming down trying to listen to his earthly father so you show 
to be an obedient person, you need to be humble. And that's what Jesus did with his earthly father and mother. And not only that, he's also obedient to his father, father in heaven. And that's why he said, my food is to do the will of my father. And especially at the time in the garden of Gethsemane, where he actually, um, he went into to sort of a stress where his sweat turned out to be blood. So you can imagine the level of stress, the level of stress in the garden of Gethsemane, where as he was reflecting, what he is going to face, the cross, the death on the cross. So by thinking, meditating on that, so he was sweating out blood. And at that moment, he prays, Father, if it is possible, please take away this cup. But thy will be done. You see, again, he allows the will of the Father to, to be fulfilled. And to do that, it is not easy. So in obedience, what happens to us is through the humility, we, we do not allow ourselves to exist in obedience. We do not allow ourselves to exist. We allow the higher authority to exist in us and through us. That's why the greatest gift of the Catholic Church is obedience. The whole Catholic Church, if at all today, it exists. And that's because of obedience. And it's not simply a concept, but the, the worst thing in life is to be obedient. Why? Because your intellect, your will, both of these do not exist when it comes to obedience. Because, because when you obey, you don't think, you don't decide, you don't will. So everything is by someone else. In the case of Jesus, it was the Father's will. And he goes to the extreme saying that my food is to, is to do the will of, the, of my Father. So he exists only for the Father. And that is the level of humility of Jesus. In our personal life as well as sin, it is not easy to be obedient, to be under someone. It simply means you need to give up your existence. So my dear brothers and sisters attending this evening, uh, this um, uh, session, Jesus was obedient. And this obedience comes, the baseline of the obedience is the humility. Another area of humility of Jesus that I could see when Jesus uh, was, was humiliated by the soldiers and all the other officials of Jews, he was mocked, he was pet, he was you know, slapped, he was dragged, he was scourged. And there were some movies that I had seen of Jesus. Jesus does not react to any of these uh, soldiers, especially the soldiers who spat on him. And I always wonder, he just looks at them with mercy, with compassion. He doesn't say a word. And it, probably Jesus must be thinking, do you know who I am? Whom you are slapping? Whom you are spitting, spitting on? Do you know me? I'm your creature. I'm your creator. I have created you. And I'm going to save you. Probably these are the thoughts in the mind of Jesus. And yet, he remains cool. He may, remains silent, serene. Just looks at them and loves them. Let them do it. Because this is the word. In Isaiah, it was told about Jesus. That he was led like a lamb and he opened he, he, he did not open his mouth so that is how jesus remains so cool and the, the serenity the peace in spite of the torture that he was going through it's because of the humility you need to learn from jesus so these are the few thoughts how jesus accepted first of all to become man. From there, the, the humility of Jesus begins.
I wish to quote some of the uh, quotations of a great saints, at least one or two of them. St. Thomas Aquinas, the great theologian of the church, he tells that humility is the mother of all virtues. You cannot have virtuous life. The base, the foundation, the mother of all virtue is humility. And for every disciple, the humility is must. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you do not practice humility. And this is what St. Thomas Aquinas tells. You know, all of us, the disciples of Jesus, if we have humility in us, we will live much better discipleship of Jesus. So St. Thomas says that for every disciple, it is, the, it is the humility that leads us into the discipleship. We have Padre Pio talks about humility. He says, humility, humility, and always humility. So there is nothing else in our life. It is all the time in every situation of ours, it's humility. Satan fears and trembles before a humble soul is the fact. A person who is of humility, he has conquered the world. He has conquered the Satan because Satan is in the pride. Satan is in selfishness. Satan is in ego. Whereas humility destroys everything. And that's how Padre Pio says, a humble soul destroys Satan. We can reflect this quote in our daily life when we become stubborn, when we do not want to you know, give up on our own thoughts, our ideas, our, our opinions, uh, what I think is right and what I, I know what I say is the right thing. So we are not flexible. That's where our pride is. That's where our ego is. And Satan is very much powerfully present in these things. So we remember from the beginning of, the, of creation, it was a pride that led us to sin. And, and the more humble we are, Satan is defeated. All our conflict of our relationships, conflict of uh, whether that come as we live our life with each other, will all be over if we practice humility. That's why Padre Pio says that Satan fears and trembles before a humble soul. We have another saint talking about humility, just like a salt is required for all kinds of food. To cook, to prepare food, we use salt that brings some sort of taste. Otherwise, you know, we don't like salt. So salt is required for all kinds of food. So humility is needed for all kinds of virtues. Let us think about this deeply. In other words, humility is required in all areas of our life. In our relationships, working place, family members among us, our ministries, our social life, wherever. It is a humility. Just like all the dishes that we cook, we add salt. And that's how humility is everywhere. We need to find and practice humility everywhere. And the great saint, again, Saint Augustine, he says, no one reaches the kingdom of heaven except by humility. That's because the humility becomes or opens us up to all the doors that could be suffering, 
acceptance as the will of God. So these are the basic. And when we have these, the acceptance, the will of God, and even to suffering, these will lead us to heaven. So our aim, our goal is the kingdom of God. All that we do, including our ministries, is for what? Why are we living in this world if not to reach heaven? Our pride, our egos, our stubbornness, our selfishness, none of these things will lead us to kingdom of heaven because these things will only destroy, bring division and tell you that you are great. So what will lead us to kingdom of heaven is the humility. And so my dear brothers and sisters, what we need is humility. Let's learn from the saints. Let's learn from Jesus, a great savior. He himself, a God, empties. The beautiful part of the life of Jesus is that emptying of his divine nature. We human beings you know, cannot bear a little insult on us. Or if you know, we have to just step aside, make a space for someone, how difficult if my husband, my wife do not agree with me, though I am right and the other person is wrong and how much we struggle. That's why the humility is baseline. It destroys. Humility kills ego. Humility kills your pride. Humility kills your selfishness. And there the humility becomes a source of our sanctification. Because you're fighting with your ego all the time. You're fighting with your selfishness all the time with the weapon of humility. You're fighting your pride all the time with the weapon of humility. That's why the humility becomes the source of holiness. As St. Augustine says, you cannot go to the kingdom of heaven without Humility. And how? It is a weapon that kills one's ego, pride, and selfishness. If you deeply reflect, where is the sin lies? The sin lies in our ego. Where are our troubles and, and, and problems of this world lies in ego, in pride and selfishness. We think deeply about the marriages that break today. Why? I don't see any other reason than the ego. Both the couple tend to say, okay, I'm right. I know. I'm educated. I am independent. I'm capable. I can manage. I don't need you. Is there anyone who is ready to humble himself, herself? That's why as that uh, the saint said that it's like we need salt for food, we need humility in every moment of our life to create space for the other person in my life and to make that person happy by building relationships. So, Yes, it is humility that kills our ego, pride, and selfishness. But uh, brothers and sisters, let's come to the, to the Holy Spirit now. We say that humility is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is. If the humility is the gift of the Holy Spirit, it simply means we don't have to borrow it from others. You don't have to hire the humility or, you know, you don't have to go in search because the scripture tells us that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't you know the spirit lives in you? St. Paul says, the spirit is given to you and those who have the spirit of son, son of God, that you become the children of God. So 
the scripture is very clear that every one of us are having Holy Spirit. The Catholic Church is a sacramental church, a beautiful sacramental church. That when we are baptized and we are given the Holy Spirit, we are anointed with the Holy Spirit. At the time of confirmation, we are giving the Holy Spirit. We are being anointed to take up or to become the soldiers of Christ. So, Spirit is in us. Now, the fact that Spirit is in us, we need to make this gift of the Holy Spirit, that is humility, ours. So, the package of the Holy Spirit is in us. In that package, there are so many things available for us. And one of the things is the gift of humility. We don't have to buy it from other sources. It is inside. This gift of humility is inside if you believe that you have Holy Spirit in you. If the Holy Spirit resides in your heart, that means the gift of, the, of humility is also there. What you need to do is activate the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, of humility in you. What is that? It's activating, not keeping it a dormant. We need to activate. St. Paul telling to writing to Timothy, second letter to Timothy 1 7. He says, Keep the fire of the spirit burning. In flame, keep it burning. Stir the Holy Spirit. So stirring, inflaming, keep burning. These are the ways of activating the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is there. Otherwise, it's dormant. So therefore, how do you activate the Holy Spirit? That's the next point that I'm going to talk to you all. So reference point is 2 Timothy 1.7. Activating the Holy Spirit that is there in you. And as we activate the Holy Spirit, you desire a particular gift or a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And today we are talking about humility. Therefore, we need to, first of all, as you know, be aware, first point, how do you make or activate the gift of humility in us? How do you activate? So the first point is that being aware that I have the gift of the Holy Spirit in me. And the temple, through the baptism and confirmation, and the scripture is very clear that spirit lives in you. So being aware, being conscious, being mindful of the gift that is there in us, a tragedy today, why you don't feel the Holy Spirit, why we don't you know, experience the Holy Spirit. All our Catholics or Christians, today we live, we live according to our own flesh or our spirit or our knowledge. And therefore, we don't know. We don't live according to the Holy Spirit. The thing is, we, we, we are taught in the catechism. We are taught here and there that there is Holy Spirit in you. But it has, it has remained as an unknown thing. It is just a concept. It's real. Holy Spirit is real who is there in you. It is real. That's what I'm saying, emphasizing the first point, being mindful, being aware, being conscious. This power of God from above is in us. And our body, our mind, our spirit, our soul has to be inflamed by the gift that is residing in us. And you see the power in you, the power of healing, the power of preaching, the rest of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So first point, be, be conscious, be aware that, that, that the Holy Spirit is in us. So you see, if there is an electric live wire is running, would we ever go and touch that? Never. Why? Because we know there is a power running. And if I touch, I will be electrocuted. At the same way, I need to know there is a power inside me of the Holy Spirit. The scripture is clear about it. What we need to do is, like St. Paul tells, stir it. 
rekindle it. So being aware, being mindful. Second point is desire whatever the gifts that you want or the fruits you want. In this case, desiring the gift of humility. Be aware and desire. I want humility. I wish to have humility. God, I want humility. Jesus, Holy Spirit, give me the gift of Holy Spirit. The desire. Third thing is praying for it. Ask. Jesus has said, ask and you will be given. Jesus said, when the, father, when the child asks for a father for an egg, he will not give a scorpion. He will give an egg. So same way, our father will give us the Holy Spirit or the power of the Holy Spirit or those, those gifts that you are desiring, he will give. How many of us, we desire these gifts. And especially today, we talk about humility. So be aware, desire, pray. The fourth thing is, it is, it is good that on a regular basis, we are being anointed by an anointed person, a preacher, a gifted person, a priest. Get anointed, get prayed over you on a regular basis. You see in the scripture, St. Paul is placing his hands on those people, especially that uh, I think it's in Antioch, where they said we'd never heard about Holy Spirit. And then he prays and they are given the Holy Spirit and they start speaking through tongues. So on a regular basis, through the prayer services or retreats or seminars, we have get prayed over, anointing. That's how we rekindle. That's how we, we stir the Holy, Holy Spirit that is there in us and, and we are being activated. So getting anointed again and again with the help of some of those gifted, maybe a priest or whoever is gifted in this life. So the fourth point is being anointed. On a regular basis, we need to be anointed. The fifth point is consciously practice humility till it becomes part of one's life. Consciously, consciously practicing humility. And this is important. It just cannot happen. Yes, God would give or pray, but we don't know. We need to believe I have the I have, if at all, my brothers and sisters, if I if I believe I have a gift of preaching, it has not just been there. I believed I have, and I had been preaching, I had been practicing, I had been preparing you know, reading the Bible, reading the Catholic teaching, and asking the Holy Spirit, give me inspiration, open my mind. So I, I'm just not there with the gift of the preaching. I'm just sitting and then whenever I'm called, I just get up and I preach. No, I am preparing. In other words, I had been practicing. At least in my younger age, I had been practicing because I'm not, now for example, if I'm talking in English, that was not my language. So I had come from my mother tongue. So it took around 10 years to, you know, uh, polish my little English. And till today, I'm practicing. I'm practicing my vocals. I'm practicing my breathing exercises so that I, I, I can preach longer duration. So it's a practice, especially a new thing, a new skill, a new uh, ability, a new uh, uh, habits if you want to cultivate. We need to practice. It may be there in you. For example, I may have a skill in me to play a guitar or musical instruments. I may be having that, but unless you practice, you'll not become a musician. So certain level practice is required. The gifts may be there. The skills may be there. Yet we need to practice. So humility requires a practice on a regular basis. In daily life, when I'm insulted in my humility, I accept. I'm abused, I'm accused. I accept in humility. I keep quiet. And this is how a practice is important. And therefore, uh, let us remember, I've seen many. Some people are purely from their childhood days, they're gifted with these gifts. 
for them it's pure direct gift from god and so they live their life but for some of us or many of us if we want to practice a particular gift we have you have to live a, a particular gift we have to practice the gift some are straight directly gifted by god some of us have to practice this gift on a regular basis in all our circumstances and situations so five points how do i activate the gift of humility first is being aware that the holy spirit lives in me a conscious be mindful of the gift of the holy spirit the second point is desire the gift of the holy spirit the third point is pray for the gift of humility fourth point being uh, getting anointed on a regular basis someone keeps lays hands on us and you know through their prayer we are anointed and this gifts become powerful and the fifth is literally practicing humility in every circumstance because some of us are given direct gifts some of us we have them in but practice them as i gave the example of music i may might be you know great music is you know is there lying down i need to excavate it i need to tune myself and practice and so i become a, a musician so five points how do i activate the gift of the holy spirit and then the very important the practical living of the gift of humility so far what i was talking is basically theory its scripture tells us saint saints talk about humility and then how we could do it again it's a prayer part so prayer part is of people like now the most difficult part is living the gift of humility every day in our life so where how the first of all be humble before god in your prayer as you walk into the church for the mass or anything acknowledge the blessed sacrament or the tabernacle the creator of 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 the universe in his humility he is there in the tabernacle bow your head bend your knee if possible prostrate and say i am nothing before you my god and my creator so acknowledging god as god he is the creator and how do we acknowledge bow our heads prostrate kneel whatever form for a second it could be in the church or in your prayer moment when you go in the in your own room to pray in the isolated place just be aware you want your personal prayer in your own room be aware that god is present when you say god he is the creator he deserves the active intellectual consent knowledge that he is god and so we 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 bow before god first thing so i would like to remember saint saint paul saint paul he reminds us saying that you know whatever the gain that i had for the sake of christ i consider them as nothing saint paul was proud man he was a jew he was a greek he was a learned man he had the philosophies of that time he knew the scripture and he could boast being a jew knowledgeable man saint paul says 
for Christ. All my wealth, his wealth was his knowledge, his pride. He says, I consider them nothing but grass before Christ. We have St. Thomas Aquinas, I was quoting him. A great man of wisdom, knowledge, God gave him huge knowledge. And so the best of the theology that we practice today, that we teach today, is coming from this great St. Thomas Aquinas. And in his contemplation, in his prayer one day, he had a vision of Jesus. As he was pray praying under the cross, he had a vision of Jesus, he said. And Jesus said, Thomas, you have written beautifully about me in your teaching. And Thomas replies to Jesus, what I see, I will never be able to write. And today one was I stopped writing and what I consider, what I wrote is nothing but grass. What I see, I will never be able to write. This is the path. This is the way they acknowledged in their humility. So, before God, we become nothing. No matter how great I am, how knowledgeable I am, at the end of the day, all we have is from God himself. So all glory goes to him. All power, honor goes to him. That's why the highest worship is acknowledging God as God and giving him that deal. Not just in our praise and worship. Sometimes we just spontaneously praise God. You know, praise God in a variety of words. But here I'm talking. We use our intellectual knowledge to acknowledge God. And then we become humble before him. So that's one point. Before God. Second point of practicing humility in our relationships. It's difficult. Husband and wife to live together. Everyone has their own uh, you know, selfishness, their own ego, pride. So, so many relationships are stressed out. Many I want to give up. The Catholic Church is so much in divorces today. Why for me to save marriages is only one thing, is to the baseline for us to save our marriages is humility. That's where you acknowledge your nothingness. In your humility, you, accept, you look at the other person as better than you. St. Paul tells us, consider the other person as better than you. From there, our relationship will become better. We are able to forgive if I'm a humble person. I'm able to overlook the insults, the tortures, the all the persecution coming from the other person. It's humility alone. Today, People are not able to forgive, carry the burden of forgiveness such a long period. Why? It, that's because ego is, unless and until you remove the ego, you cannot forgive. And as I said, who kills the ego? It is the humility. So in humility, your ego is destroyed and you don't exist for yourself. You exist only for the other person. And that is how our relationships are maintained. Relationships are built. Relationships grow. Because in humility, you try to make the other person happy. You think good of the other person at your expense. But if you are humble, you don't say 
that you are going through anything. You don't see that the sacrifices that you make, you really don't count those sacrifices. You don't make a list of your sacrifices. You don't, you know, you don't go on telling others how much good I have done for the others. You don't count all those things. Because in humility, everything is watered down. You are there for others. You are there to make other lives better. And all sorts of relationships that we have today will be beautiful if I live the virtue of humility. Look at Jesus. Those soldiers, I mean, they're mocking him. And Jesus just keeps quiet because he knows they know nothing. And so, he's allowing things to happen. That's because of humility. There's no other virtue. You may try to practice any other virtues, but no, without humility, nothing can be done. So, whatever may be our, our uh, in the relationships, it is the humility that will help us to make our relationships better. And what is our life? Our life is nothing but relationship. Your husband-wife relationship, Parents' children's relationship, your sibling relationship, your working relationship, your colleague relationship, your friends' relationship, you travel with somebody or the other all the time. There are relationships. So, humility in relationships. The fourth point is getting rid of intellectual pride. We do live. I'm a learned person, I'm with the degrees or maybe status with a Financial condition may be higher. So these are all prides. Again, take us away from God. To destroy this pride, we need humility. Especially intellectual pride. I know. I know better than you. I'm learned. So that's called intellectual pride. We need to destroy our intellectual pride like St. Thomas. And St. Paul. Because these were the great uh, masters, St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Paul. They were the great masters. But before Jesus, they emptied them themselves. Yeah, the human, their, their knowledge did not go anywhere. But they were humble. I remember one of the stories told about St. Thomas Aquinas is that he was such a brilliant man. One young novice goes and tells him that the horse is flying. You know, this great man believed this young novice and he walked out of his room to see the horse was flying. And this young novice laughed at him, saying that, I fooled you. So this great man could be fooled by a young boy. If he were to use his brain uh, being a philosopher, how can horse fly? But he believed that's his humility. He did not use his brain to, to, you know, to discuss with this young boy because he believed a young, you know, he did not use his brain or intellect. He could not, you know, with this young fellow, he expected him to tell the truth. So what I'm trying to say is intellectual Pride should not guide us, guide our activities. But in our relationship, intellect can become a block. We have another block in our daily living, especially people like me who are in ministry. It is called ministerial pride. You're proud of your ministry, that I'm a preacher, I'm a healer, and I get visions. I can see the future. I can know the past. These are the gifts. And probably you may walk around and being so proud of having these gifts, but ministerial gifts, and you would, you know, may live with that pride. And remember, pride comes from Satan. So it's not a big deal for Satan to get into you, even when you are a, a best a minister in this world. Satan can be there in your life. 
Therefore, you need to get rid of the ministerial pride by acknowledging every gift comes from God. So um, the more you're humble, the less the pride. It could be intellectual pride. It could be ministerial pride. And the final point is in our daily living. The more humble you are, the more attractive you are to the other person. And this attractiveness for what? It is to evangelize. So people come to me. I want to just give us uh, experience. Uh, recently, I was called for a reception of a Golden Jubilee celebration of a couple. And I was called to bless the food. And uh, the parties go on. But I ate my food and I went. And I was waiting for my turn to come. And so when my turn came, I, I went to bless the food. And the host called me, Father, please join me at my table. And at his table, there was this young couple who believed in no God. They said, we don't believe in any God, any religion. And they were so attracted to me, like they wanted to talk to me so much. They wanted to listen from me so much. And in that little moment, I talked to them. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. And Jesus is the life. They didn't hesitate to listen. They received the word. And they said, Father, it was so beautiful to spend time with you. Humility becomes a means to evangelization. It becomes an attraction for evangelization. Remember, gift of the Holy Spirit are meant for evangelization. My dear brothers and sisters, I conclude here. If anyone has a doubt, question, if we could ask or any point which was not clear, I would clear that point. So we have five minutes or three minutes. Any, anyone has a question, doubt, or any clarification? Yeah. Can you give us your blessing before you go? Yes, sure. But anybody has got any, any clarification to any, any points that I spoke which were not clear or something like that? I'll pray over you all. I'll pray, definitely. Okay. If nothing, then maybe we can conclude. I'll give you my blessing. I, like to, I would like to thank for giving me this beautiful opportunity. And if I can tell you honestly, uh, while talking, I'm sharing the word, my experiences. It was, it was like... It was the power of the Holy Spirit I was feeling. Um, if you could see my face was sort of a swollen. I was not keeping well. So and I was a bit anxious. How would this session go? But due to, in the middle of the session, I could feel a great joy within. And that coming from the Holy Spirit. Thank, Thank you for giving me. Yes, Father, we saw that. <laughs> God. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to be with you all. Yes. So let's make a small prayer and I'll give my blessing. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day, this moment, this online session. We thank you, Jesus, for giving us your spirit, paraclete, the advocate, helper, this session, you blessed us. And I believe, Lord, you have anointed me. I believe you, whatever that I preached is my personal experience. And above all, I learned to be more humble as I was sharing the word. Jesus, I thank you for all the brothers and sisters online or maybe later on watching this or attending this session. The power of your Holy Spirit flow in them. Let the gift of humility be more powerful in them to live the relationships and to be evangelists, to proclaim your word. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. May Almighty God Thank bless. Thank you, Father. Almighty God bless you, the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you